Hey guys, welcome back to another Emmy Creations video and today we're going to go through animation on my iPad on Procreate. So Procreate has a pretty simple but really fun animation program and it's something really easy to pick up if you have an iPad. So if you're new, this could be something that can get you started and let's get into it. Horror seems ready. <laughs> So the first thing you're going to do is you go to the actions panel on the top left. It looks like a little screw, 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 screw. and then you're going to go to canvas and then you're going to turn on animation assist. And once you turn that on, on the bottom, you're going to see this awesome panel. And before we do anything else, we're going to change a few settings. Uh, we're going to change frames per second. I'm not sure why this is, the default's always super weird, but we're going to change it to 12. So usually it's um, animation standard is 24, but they draw on twos, which means each frame is held for two. So technically they draw uh, 12 frames per second. 24 just gives them uh, more options if they want like fast movement and they want to put a lot of information in there, they draw on ones. But the alternative to doing that is doing the 24 and making each frame held for two, which is like a pain to do. So we're not going to do that. So what we are going to do is we are going to, for now, Put it on 12 and if you find yourself needing to do faster animations or you feel like 12 just is not enough information to be slammed into one second then you can play around with it. Um, I usually also change onion skinning to around one to three frames depending on what you're kind of drawing. If you're doing arcs you probably want more frames so you can see the full arc and make sure like the whole thing is um, smooth. Make sure your whole arc is smooth so you'll probably turn on more onion frames and I leave everything else and then the other thing I might change is the one shot versus loop so if you're doing like a movie you'll probably only do one shot which means uh, when you click play it'll only play it once across if you do loop it'll just keep playing <laughs> just like loop so once we got those settings done let's figure out how to add a frame. So this awesome little corner thing has it conveniently there for you to add frames, but you can also add a new frame via the layer plus sign up here. It's because every single layer is treated like a frame. So layer one is frame one and so on. Um, the order does matter. So if I move layer one up, that will become, it will also move the position in the timeline. So the bottom ones are going to play first and the top one is going to play last. Another cool thing to know is you can group these layers. So it works the same way. You slightly pull it to the right and you click group and this one group will become one frame. So this works really cool if you have and want to split up your figures into Let's say one frame is the head, one frame is the body, um, he has no arms, so another frame is the leg. So if you want to do a duplicate, that will give you a brand new frame with all the components already in there. And then you can just simply move components around, which is a really easy way to do quick animations with the same or similar components. Another thing you can do with these frames is if you click the frames down here at the bottom menu, you have a few options. So you can hold the frame and you're gonna see the grayed out version is like the hold frames. Um, or you can duplicate here. It works the same if you duplicate here versus the layer menu. Kinda of depends on which you prefer to see more or use more. And then this cool thing is that you can actually put it on as a background. So it's going to show you the background as like a little tab to the right. So that will be the background. Whatever you draw in the background will be held for all frames and it will not be able to move. It's kind of like a still frame you put in the back. Um, you can also, after you add a background, so you actually move the frames like this. If you click and drag, you can move the position of the frames. 
and it'll move it correspondingly in here as well. Uh, after you have a background, you can now also put a foreground. So maybe the foreground is going to be a, sorry for the poor drawings. <laughs> maybe it's going to be like a building that he's going to walk behind. So that's going to also be a cool option for you. So the reason I say it's not really robust is because you can't really layer, uh, much more than that. So a lot of things we like to do when we animate is probably, uh, for example, maybe you have like a person walking their dog in the background and you want to be able to have different layers for this guy in the foreground and this guy in the background. So it's not going to allow that level of complexity, but if you're doing something simple like let's just do a walk cycle or let's do a quick animation. That's where it becomes very powerful and really quick to draw out and sketch out. If you want to give it more complexity or have more layers that you can work with, you can always, after you're done with everything, you can actually share this and share a Photoshop file of it. And it'll actually export all the layers. Um, so it won't remember like how many frames there are, or how long it's been holding for. So it's kind of frustrating because you're gonna to have to edit that, which I'll show you in a minute. So first, let's go to an animation that I've been working on so I can give you an example. So this is the animation I was working on and it's basically this little bird is drawing out my logo. So he flies up and he signs this. So obviously the um, hold frame is or the background frame is my logo but as he's drawing it it should actually appear i definitely could have done it in procreate if i wanted to and use like the uh, grouping functionality but i chose it to for educational purposes to throw into photoshop and show you how that kind of looks if you want to throw something in photoshop so i exported a file out and let's go to photoshop and look at it so this is how the file looks in Photoshop. It's a little crazy, but um, it's because they don't have any animation information. So everything is just importing frames, basically. Hopefully your animation is smaller than mine. So I would create a video timeline. And what you have to do, um, first make sure to edit all your frame rates and everything. Uh, the frame rate should match what the frame rate is on or set on for the procreate system. So if you did 12 or 24, you should set that here. And then this is what you do. You drag every single frame. It's really painful, but it does mean you can edit it in another file. This is one way to do it. I'm sure there are other ways. After you get all of them, pull to the right frame. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's no way to group or edit all the frames at once, but if you know a way, let me know in the comments below. After I moved all my little birdie frames into the proper size, so I deleted the background and this is what we get. We have him doing his thingy and then sitting back down. So what I added was the background component with my logo. So it starts off empty and I have frames of it appearing as he draws. And I did this in Photoshop. As I said before, this is simple enough where you can probably do it in Procreate, but I just kind of wanted to show you um, a different option of how you can pull something you made in Procreate into Photoshop and edit it in another way. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of how to get around this um, very simple system. I mean, you can always export it as an animated GIF or MP4, um, but it probably has limitations of like, you can't really edit the frames and stuff like that. And since uh, the export to Photoshop is built into Procreate, this is an easy, fast option for you to be able to do more with what you drew on Procreate. I hope that helped. I hope it helped get you started and I'll definitely have more tutorials on animation in general. I know we didn't really cover or go over any 
like animation concepts. So my new videos, I'm gonna be going through like how to make a walk cycle for people who don't have animation experience. So if you're looking forward to that, be sure to click the subscribe and alert button so you get notified for all my new videos. Um, if you have any additional questions or want to see me animate live, I'm also on Twitch three days a week and you're feel free to check out the link in the description below and come say hi ask your questions and let's hang out. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.